it, it, it appears as if white mold is is the least possibly dangerous of the molds as the oh, white good. coloring means that it has not yet flourished its spores. Ah, caught it in time. Good. What's the worst? The red one. Black, Black oh, or red. Oh. Saruman. The Saruman red, mold. Red mold does sound very... Black, Black does, but red sounds... Yeah, green mold, uh, brown mold, pink mold, purple one mold. One minute. <laughs> All kinds of mold. You know what I use? Bleach. Just bleach everything. Yeah. Spray it down, let it sit for an hour, come back, scrub, rinse. But That's right. Good day, Internet, where you get mold, Kanye, and more. <laughs> Moldy Kanye news. Moldy oh. Kanye. I miss the mold, Kanye. Oh, good <laughs> one. Keeping it mold school. <laughs> Oh, I like you guys. <laughs> oh, we like you too. That's Even nice. on a trying day, mm -hmm. tell ya. Try to always, live the spirits. Always, always, always boost the spirits. Yeah. Mold Lang Syne. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Mold Lang Syne. <laughs> All right. Oh. Uh, 10 seconds. 10 seconds. Not Here we go. <laughs> Five, four, three, two. Hey, thanks to everybody who supports Daily Tech News Show directly. To find out the benefits, head to dailytechnewsshow.com slash support. This is the Daily Tech News for Thursday, September 20th. My anniversary. Happy anniversary, wife. 2018 in Los Angeles. I'm Tom Merritt. And from Studio Feline, I'm Sarah Lane. And from Oakland, California, I'm Justin Robert Young. And I'm Roger from somewhere in L.A. County. Hello, Roger from somewhere in L.A. County. Hello, the rest everyone. of our audience. Uh, <laughs> thank you for joining the Daily Amazon News Show. We'll be talking uh, nothing but Amazon as Amazon announced uh, approximately 500,000 products today. <laughs> in just about an hour. I mean, they didn't take long to do it, but they just it was rapid fire. Boom, boom, boom. Well, if there's one thing, you can be very excited about that. That's always yeah, your bugaboo. Right. Right. Yeah, no, I, if they had to announce this many products, which I'm not sure they did, uh, at least they did it fast, so I'll, go, I'll give them that. Let's uh, start with a few tech things you should know. Um, I'll play that. As Tom uh, just mentioned, Amazon announced a big pile, and I mean big, of new <laughs> gadgets and voice assistance features Thursday. We will run through all the new echoes and a clock and a microwave a little later in the show. Sony Interactive Entertainment SVP Hiroyuka Oda said that the company will stop production of its PS Vita in Japan in 2019. Sony has no plans for a successor to the Vita. He did mention that other countries, uh, but most markets sell Vitas made in Japan. He did not mention. Did not mention. Sorry. The other countries. Mention it. Uh, GoPro announced its Hero 7 line of cameras going on sale September 27th. The Hero 7 White is $199 and the least dangerous of the GoPros. Uh, can do 1440p video at 60 frames per second. The Silver version is $299 with 4K at 30 frames per second and GPS. And the Hero 7 Black has all of that for $399 and can do 4K at 60 frames per second. Adds in super slow-mo and live streaming capability as well. It also introduced an improved image stabilization feature called Hyper Smooth. It's what I tried to be in junior high. Never succeeded at. Mm. All right, let's talk a little more about insurance, Justin. Ah, yes. The exciting world of life insurance. John <laughs> Hancock announced that it will no longer underwrite traditional life insurance. Instead, selling interactive policies that track fitness and health data through wearable devices. Hancock introduced the interactive policies in 2015. It is an established product in Britain and South Africa and gaining popularity in the United States. The policies can offer discounts for hitting exercise targets and gift cards for logging data. How much does this affect people? Because I, I don't know how many people actually have life insurance independently like this, right? Where you... When you go to John Hancock, know. I know a lot of people do, but I'm 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 curious because my first thought, the reason I asked this, is that's kind of a burden. Like, oh, if you want life insurance, you're going to have to shell out some money for a tracker. Well, and it's also John Hancock saying, "All right, you got life insurance. Like, why are you getting it? Are you being cautious, or is there something wrong with you? And if we can track more data that 
is it, you know more and more being established to be accurate that we can use to figure out whether or not we want to give you a life insurance policy. I don't blame the company for doing so, but it is, it's a whole privacy conversation as well. I, I would hasten to, to clarify uh, in, in case someone gets the wrong idea. It's not about getting the life insurance policy. You can't be turned down because you didn't wear a tracker in the past. This is about giving you deductions and perks for yeah. wearing the tracker while you're doing the life insurance. So you kind of have to wear it after you get it. You can't be turned down for not having one, but you're gonna have to have it to keep going with it. The idea being it will keep you healthier if you have a tracker, that's what they found. It encourages well, and, you to be more to be healthier. And this is John Hancock trying to incentivize and keep good bets. All insurance kind of boils down to whether or not you are going to be paying in more than you are taking out. But for life insurance specifically, uh, it's a little bit less of a immediate, uh, how is this going to affect my life kind of thing? Because you're worrying about the future. You're worrying about your family and who you're going to leave behind. So what they want to do is say, hey, look, we like the people that are wearing wearables that are at the gym that we can verify through this fairly easy process are doing it. And therefore, we can make it a little bit less expensive for you or give you some kind of incentive to say, OK, we'll keep doing this because that means you're going to stay alive longer, which means you're going to pay us more, which means we're OK with paying out your life insurance when you die. Nobody wants you to stay alive more than a life insurance company. Yes. <laughs> well, okay. So what happens when you, you, you lose your smartwatch that's tracking all the things that Johnny Hancock says is going to give you perks? What do your deductions look like? Uh, yeah. Well, I don't know if you could lose your policy if you stopped wearing it. That's a good question. I'd like to know that. Uh, if anybody in the insurance business uh, knows how these things work uh, a little better, let us know. But yeah, I, you're certainly I, I, not, I, I, you're going to lose your deductions. Yeah. Yeah. This, this is more carrot than stick. I think they, they just want people to, to, feel a benefit for they doing just be giving the trackers to people and saying like if you want a more expensive one great but you get at least a basic fitbit if you do this this is all about making you a better statistic on the actuarial table that they compute every year to make sure that they're not insolvent instagram announced users can now use gifs using giphy into their instagram direct messages Oh, happy day. Starting today, Instagram Direct will also have a GIF button on the composition bar. So if you click on it, you'll get trending GIFs where you can hit random. People who use Giphy within Slack are already familiar with this. For whatever Giphy thinks you probably want based on the keyword. Instagram already offers this in its tool toolkit for story stickers. So more of a GIF rollout on the Instagram platform. Who's excited? Me. I, Are you? I'm glad that Instagram is more GIF friendly. Sure. I don't know exactly how much I want to use it in my direct messages. How many Chappelle I, show I, gifts do they have? That's a well, good it's, it's, it's sort of like, how much do you want to use emojis in your direct messages? It, it comes up once in a while. This I, is a I, nice feature. I'm sure I will use it. I hope it leads to Instagram being more gift friendly for not only posts in your main feed, but also in your uh, stories and stuff like that. I, I, I want I want Instagram to continue to be more gift friendly. I need to use them more. That's I, I know how to properly use a GIF and I know how to properly say GIF, hmm. but I don't use them often enough. I'm just trying to, there's a, there's, there's a faction out there, Sarah, that, there's a faction out there that needs to be addressed. There's All a right. faction. I try All to right. throw them a bone every once in a while. Fine. Okay? Fine. The balance okay. of the show. But yeah, I, I don't, I don't use them in a way that this is going to change my behavior much. Maybe it will. I don't, I doubt it though. Nah, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's lovely. Gift friendly people. I I'm a big fan of Giphy in uh, uh, particular platforms that have it integrated well. I mentioned Slack before. Use it all the time in Slack. It's very funny. Yes. Um, but uh, yes, it, in a stories feature slash DM feature, great. It's it's not going to revolutionize your Instagram experience, but if it can help you express yourself to people uh, without using actual words, I'm not mad at you. I'd like you to send me a gift that explains that though. I will do that after the show. Thanks. <laughs> uh, Facebook launched a test of its dating feature in its mobile app in Colombia. Facebook dating uses what it knows about you to suggest matches from people who have chosen to be listed. Facebook bent over backwards to point out you have to opt in. It's separate from Facebook messenger. It's separate from your Facebook profile. We're trying to do it right. 
the default doesn't show friends. You can't see your friends in this. And you can even choose to exclude friends of friends if that's even a little bit too close to home. Users can express interest in up to 100 people per day. There is a max. And there are no plans at this time to monetize it. They just want to see if it works in Colombia. And if it does, they plan to roll it out to the rest of the world. Hot nights in Bogota. <laughs> well, it's, uh, yeah, I know this is a limited uh, testing slash rollout, and we've talked about the idea of Facebook introducing dating on its platform in the past. It's interesting that Facebook's like, listen, we know you might not want to be matched with friends or even friends of friends because that's awkward, even though most dating apps actually use Facebook as the repository to figure out who your friends are and who your friends of friends are in order to match you with those people. So it's almost like the opposite of like Facebook saying, this might be sort of an underground thing you might wanna do, don't worry, we're not gonna make it weird for you. Even and, though it's sort of the antithesis of what a lot of dating apps already do. Yeah, yeah. Re this regarding the hot nights in Bogota, Justin, they're, they're also saying we don't wanna be a hookup app we're doing things to actually get in the way of that and try to foster people who want longer term relationships. Right. Cause everyone knows if you meet a friend of a friend, it's a hookup app. Yeah. <laughs> so, Gotta get that out of there and meet a stranger. Look, uh, hinge is already a very popular dating app, uh, that uses Facebook data. There is obviously a, uh, a, a, a market there for people who want to use the data that they already enter into social media to make this obviously uh, a comically uh, ridiculous and painful process for some a little bit easier and more successful. Uh, so uh, I, I think that it's there. Really, my biggest thing is that just make a hinge clone, make a better hinge clone that is powered, that is more explicitly powered by Facebook. I just don't know. Facebook is such a overloaded brand with so much kind of tied to it. I, I really do wonder whether or not this would be something that if you gave it even the patina of a different name, that it looks a little bit like a different product, if it wouldn't be something that people wouldn't jump all over immediately. I, you know, you say that, but if we've learned nothing from the whole election snafu over Facebook and privacy violations and Cambridge Analytica, it's that, Facebook can kind of do everything and people will still use it. So it's, like yeah, it's, it's the right, the right thing to do. Like, yeah, sure. Some people won't be attracted to it because it's called Facebook dating, but that won't be the most majority. Uh, yeah. Uh, maybe. I don't know. I, I, I think people already are volunteering their data to date with. Uh, uh, so it's, it, it seems like it works. So whether or not it works as a Facebook feature, we'll see. Investigations by the CBC News and Toronto Star claim Ticketmaster recruits professional scalpers to expand its resale business and optimize pricing. Automated purchasing of tickets is prohibited by the terms of service, but a Ticketmaster sales rep is quoted as saying, quote, I have brokers that have literally a couple hundred of accounts. It's not something that we look at or report, end quote. The source said the resale division of Ticketmaster does not report users to the abuse division. Eddie Vedder was right. Ticketmaster sucks. <laughs> A division of Ticketmaster sucks. I mean, it's it's tempting to run with this and just, you know, and say, all oh, uh, Ticketmaster has been trying to fool us the whole time. And it does seem like the resale division is saying that. Like the, the undercover investigation found salespeople at Ticketmaster who are like, look, the abuse division, we don't talk to them, all right? So wink, wink, do whatever you want. We're not going to turn you in. If you get caught by them, though, it's, it's, it's out of our hands. Ticketmaster's official policies prohibit this sort of behavior, and the abuse division does try to crack down on it. But, I, but what, what is controversial here, despite all of that, is that you have a division that is kind of actively saying, wink, wink, nudge, nudge. If you can get away with it, great. We won't tell on you. Look, uh, Ticketmaster, talk about a brand that has been defined for, oh, for, for, for many, many years. Ticketmaster's a, a brand that people don't look at kindly between the fees and uh, exclusive windows and when people are able to buy stuff. Uh, this is, I mean, I, I joke about Pearl Jam and Smashing Pumpkins and Louis C.K. and so many other artists trying to take things away from the Ticketmaster monopoly. But this is an industry that ha that was rocked by private resale of tickets with StubHub and similar uh, uh communities uh i i i'm not shocked that they are trying to control it as much as possible nor am i shocked that this company that has a bad reputation 
has another as a, a an element within them that is doing things that would earn one a bad reputation. Yeah. I, and if you don't understand what it, what we're talking about on Ticketmaster, you can buy a ticket from someone or or directly, you know, from the venue and then resell it. Uh, and what what's going on is scalpers go in and automate bots to buy the tickets and then resell them. And they'll have hundreds of accounts to do this so they can they if there's a limit on the amount of tickets per person, they can get around that and sell hundreds of thousands of tickets. Folks, if you want to get all the tech headlines each day in about five minutes, be sure to subscribe to dailytechheadlines.com. All right. I broke down the Amazon announcements into four categories. The first of the four is new versions of the classic Echo. Uh, Amazon announced the Echo Dot. By the way, we'll just say it right now. Everything's covered in fabric now. Everything looks like a Google Home. Uh, the new Echo Dot has a few fewer microphones, four microphones, uh, but a pro supposedly improved sound quality. Prices of everything are also the same. They didn't raise the prices. Uh, the Echo Show is twice as big of a screen now, 10 inches, real-time Dolby processing, integrated Skype and Firefox, which I found interesting, and the Echo Plus, that's the one that has the built-in smart home hub, uh, has a temperature sensor and really interestingly, something called local voice control that lets you control your smart home devices even if your internet is down. It'll just use your lo local Wi-Fi network with a limited amount of voice recognition that's built in on the device itself rather than going through the cloud. What do y'all think of the new classic Echoes? Well, uh, you know, a new fabric design is sort of, I don't know, whatever. Uh, the... the um, uh, Apple does it as well, but it's a nice look. It's nice that we're getting new features for roughly the same prices yep. um, on all these devices. And as far as the Echo Show having twice as big of a screen at 10 inches, unless you had like a tiny little space that you were trying to shove it into in your kitchen or something, I think that, that would be advantageous to most people who are looking for a video screen version of an Echo device. That was the one thing I didn't like as much. And I, and I don't think it's a bad feature, but I like my five inch Echo. It fits Echo Show because sure. yeah. it fits where I have it really well. I wouldn't want a 10 inch one there. So kind of sad to see they don't have a five inch and a 10 inch available, but but whatever, that's, that's fine. Justin, anything else on these? Uh, Amazon knows the spoilers. Uh, they know what sells, they know why it sells, they know what uh, uh, people, they know what uh, consumers want because they're the ones selling them. They sell probably the most amount of Google homes because they sell Google homes on Amazon. So if, 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 if fabric is the order of the day, that's the order of the day. I like the, the echo plus though. That's one of the things that I found out with an internet outage yesterday, how much my smart home completely goes from, uh, you know, a uh, 60 to Amish, uh, <laughs> there is any kind of outage. So I'm happy to see that. All right, let's talk about their high-end audio announcements. The Echo Sub is a 100-watt base uh, woofer, or subwoofer, uh, that is uh, able to pair with an Echo. Uh, it do doesn't work on its own, so add some bass to your Echo sound. Or if you have two Echoes, you can now pair all, all three of them together and have stereo sound with the subwoofer. Uh, they're also opening up their multi-room music feature to all devices for free, starting with the Polk Com, uh, command bar later this year. Uh, there's also the Echo Link amp and the Echo Link that have a built-in, well, the amp has a built-in 60-watt two-channel amplifier, and they both have higher quality audio than the Echo Dot provides. So you can get digital and analog inputs and outputs. Uh, the Echo Link is basically the same thing without the amp. And then there's the Echo Input, which is kind of the opposite side of the dot. So you have the Echo Link that's like, hey, want better quality audio than the dot? Go with this one. There's the Echo Input, which has no speaker at all. It's just line out and Bluetooth. And Amazon says they're going to partner with existing speaker makers, starting with Bose, to bundle these in. So you, you buy a Bose speaker, and you can put a few of these around and have them connect by Bluetooth and one of them by line. Uh, and, and now suddenly that speaker becomes throughout the home, sort of, at least controllable. I love this stuff personally, but these are the com conversations that I have with a lot of my friends where people are just like, eh, I don't know, it's audio. Can I just plug it into the wall and it just sort of like play my music? The this is more of a, yeah, like sort of audiophile, want to tinker around, uh, you know, most people don't even know what a subwoofer is or why it would help. Um, and certainly amplifiers, uh, you know, go into that category as well. 
this sounds great to me. The prices are low and it's wonderful. However, it's all about the setup process because if it's complicated setup, you're, you're just, you're, you're not going to get casual audio, uh, listeners interested in most of this stuff in my opinion. We're, we're, this is going to also be my commentary for the next few things. So just go ahead and copy and paste. Uh, <laughs> but I don't have to say because we have a million products to get through. Christmas time is here. They want you to think of the music lover in your life. And they want a very affordable hundred uh, around a hundred to 200 to 300 dollar device, depending on how much you love them, that you can say, hey, look, here's a new functionality to your already existing set of speakers. Or here's a way that you can bring this is for your for your audio file. Uh, a member of your family that you want to buy a, a reasonably priced gift for. That is the theme of this announcement, which is we are putting our voice assistant in everything. Uh, and the knock on the echo has been not a great speaker. Well, guess what? We put a subwoofer to make it a better speaker. And if you're really into high end audio and you're like, I would never give up my high quality speakers. We got an answer for you there too. Uh, what if you want a DVR over the air? Well, they got an answer for that. Here's a bunch of their home announcements fire tv recast is essentially a tableau or uh, a home run uh if you know what those products are then you know that what you do is you plug an antenna into the the recast the fire tv recast in this case and put it wherever the signal's best in your house and then it will use your wi-fi network to send all the dvr recorded content and live over the air to your device over your home Wi-Fi, or you can access it over the internet as well. And that uh, is available for the Fire TV, the Echo Show, the Echo Spot, or iOS and Android. Uh, so that's interesting because it's turning your Echo Show into a television now. And it has two versions, uh, two tuners and 500 gigabytes for $229 or a terabyte and four tuners for $279. Amazon also announced a smart plug, which, it like is like every other smart plug. It can it can through an app or through voice control turn whatever's plugged into it on or off by giving it power or taking the power away, and it can be scheduled to turn things on or off. But this one is also hubless, so you don't need to have a smart hub to make it work, unlike some of the others. But it's hundred twenty five dollars. All right. There's also the Ring stick up cam, which is not as they joked in the Verge story about pointing a gun at you. Uh, it just means you can stick it anywhere, which lots of these cams could already be done. Uh, so this one can be battery powered or wired. The Echo Wall Clock, I know is Roger's favorite uh, because it's a wall clock like that can set alarms like that one uh, and can show you the progress of timers as well as the current time. Uh, and it has microphone in it, so it's a full on Echo. Then there's the Home Basics Microwave, which does not have a microwave or it does not have a, a microphone in it, uh, but it is a microwave. Uh, you have to have an Echo to control it, uh, but it does have a dash button built in meant to help you order microwave popcorn, or it can just keep track of your popcorn usage and order it automatically when it knows you're out. That one's 60 bucks. Uh, and then a couple of technologies that go along with this stuff. Wi-Fi Simple Setup is using Wi-Fi lockers to store your Wi-Fi credentials and then share them when you add a compatible smart home device to your network, TP-Link and Eero are their first partners there. And there's the Alexa Connect Kit. That's what turned the microwave into a, a device that works on the network. And that includes a module with Bluetooth LE and Wi-Fi that companies can put in devices to make them smart. And they're trying to get other companies to pick that up. All right, so lots of home stuff here. I think the most ridiculous one is the electric plug for $129, but what do you guys think? Uh, I, I think that that's high price, but that that's for a very specific use case. Uh, my, my guess is that they are looking at other products like that and they're saying, okay, if you have a need to do it, then this is for, you know, your, your, uh, beach home or something, or people who are renting their houses out on Airbnb and they want to echo plus is $149. It's only like 25 bucks more I, to get a thing that then you can go buy the 15, $20 plugs and use those. I, I'm only giving Amazon credit for being price smart on this because of what I'm going to talk about next. All right. Wall clock is the stocking stuffer of 2018. I can't imagine anything else being more of a, I have no idea what to get somebody 30 bucks. It looks impressive. It can hang anywhere. It does some of the stuff that, 
that is is popular elsewhere. And if you already are in that ecosystem, here's another place for it. I also think that the microwave, as silly as that sounds, and as much as we can make fun of, we do we really need it on a microwave? Yes. For $60, if you're looking to buy a microwave and it's that or a comparably priced $60 microwave, which is about what they cost, but that doesn't have that functionality, you're going to go for that functionality. I love, I'd love to know how many people who get the, the Amazon wall clock in their stocking, if it even fits in there, um, are like, oh, but I don't have an echo device. And they're like, the person giving them the, is like, well, shoot. Okay. I kept my receipt because the, you but don't just like echo plug device. in the, the, the wall. The wall clock doesn't need another echo device. It's the microwave that needs another echo device. No, the, the wall, wall clock does. It no. connects to an echo device via Bluetooth. Uh oh, mm. uh oh, debate. Uh -oh. All right, all right. You may be right. All right, we'll 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 hold that over. I I thought the wall clock had the the voice built in, but I could be wrong about that. Wow. That one you can't get yet either. So we can't. Right. We, there's very limited information about it. But yeah, if uh, if you buy somebody uh, the microwave too, right? Uh, if you buy somebody something that no, Sarah, Sarah, have, Sarah's right. Sarah's right. It does not okay. have Alexa built in. If you buy somebody that doesn't have Alexa built in and they don't have an Echo, well, then you're going to have to buy them an Echo too. This this is the gift you get that you got the Echo for them last year. Right. That's my father-in-law. That's my father-in-law. <laughs> All your father-in-laws. So yeah, uh, wall clock, don't buy it. All right, let's talk about <laughs> the... Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry, don't, you can't buy it yet, but maybe you can buy it later. All right, let's talk about the car. Uh, Echo Auto, I think maybe more confounding to me than the the electric outlet echo auto connects to a car through bluetooth or an audio jack uses your phone for connectivity and as a display so you need your phone uh but there you go you can technically put amazon voice in your car uh amazon also introduced something i think is a cooler thing which is guard mode for your echo devices it detects the sound of breaking glass or a fire or CO2 alarm will then record a clip of that sound and send it to your phone so you know what's going on. And it can even uh, integrate with security companies, including Amazon's own Ring, but also ADT. And it can do things like randomize the lights going on and off uh, to simulate you being home. Uh, it's, a, it's a cool little function of the existing Echoes. Uh, there's also something called Hunches, where it will use some neural networks to try to guess what you're doing and say, hey, you left the porch light on. Did you mean to do that? Or, you know, I think the door is still unlocked. Do you want me to lock that before you go to bed? Stuff like that. Uh, and then for parents, the free time service on voice powered devices now supports routines. Uh, so the, the routines like good night, you can now have them for, for the free time service for your kids. Uh, and uh, there's a whisper back function. So when you whisper to the Echo, it knows you whispered and it's like, oh, okay, I'll keep it down. And it gives you a whisper back. Fast, fast thoughts on this before we move on. Yeah, the, these are all, uh, again, I, I think that they are also taking either other products that they see so well or functionalities that they are looking to serve and they're putting their own product out on it. Uh, again, this, Amaz this is not a guest for Amazon. They know what products sell. They know that, uh, that we have been covering literally every device uh, uh, has some kind of voice assistant uh, built into it, and many of them are... Uh, Amazon. So th this is them uh, uh, putting it into it. I actually do think that the car thing is a, is a smart idea. But just use your phone. It's not always on, though. But you have to have your phone on to use this thing. So if your phone's not on, then that thing doesn't pocket. work. Huh? You have your phone in your pocket. I mean, you, you can't like click the. I don't know. I, I've I've had I've, 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 I've had to use buy. maps on this thing anyway. You're gonna pull it out of your pocket. I have had friends of mine buy devices buy a dash cam just so it could have ec the uh, echo voice assistant built into it also uh i want to apologize for sarah for correcting her when she wasn't wrong and criticize amazon for calling something an echo when it didn't have voice built in. <laughs> don't worry about it you know he we won't apologize to is our reddit community because they're the best thank you to everybody who participates in our subreddit you can submit stories and vote on them at dailytechnewsshow.reddit.com and if you prefer facebook or if you like both great facebook.com slash group slash daily tech news show is where you can find us there onward to the mailbag 
Onward. This one comes from Ryan, the DJ, who suggested OmniCharge for frequent top travelers who need their gear charged. And this was actually in response to um, Chris Christensen's am amateur traveler uh, um, uh, tip from the other day. Ryan says, first model that I'm suggesting from OmniCharge uses a 20,000 milliamp battery with two USB ports, a regular wall plug for charging laptops and small appliances and all the good stuff. <laughs> you know, because when you take your small appliances with you on the road, which you might no judgment. The next version includes USB-C for more complimentary laptops. The current model is in its Indiegogo campaign, so it's still trying to raise money, featuring a four, uh, 40,000 milliamp battery, which can be swapped out on the fly so you don't have to keep recharging the power pack out in the field if it dies. Ryan says, I took the Type-C version to a conference with me in July. I was able to get through pretty long conference days with my Surface Book 2, my iPhone 7 Plus, Hotspot, and the mobile power pack didn't have to bring a single power supply with me to the conference center. Ryan, I'm with you on this. I have the, this. The, the fewer cables, the better. Oh, you do. I have it and I love it. And it's got a regular old outlet on it and it can get me about 20 from a dead laptop. It can get me about a 25% charge on my MacBook, which is if, if, if folks have In been a pinch. Yeah, the pinch. That's, that's that's huge. It, it is. It is the difference between sitting at the coffee shop that you want or trying to go to somewhere else where you can get by the outlet. Uh, uh, it is it is freedom that unlocks part of your world, fan of the Omni Charge. And uh, Insta correction as well, thanks uh, to another Jay Martin in the Discord. The Amazon Smart Plug's only 25 bucks. Now, The Verge, TechCrunch, many of the outlets out there that we rely on all said 125. So at some point, somebody told them 125. Maybe that was like a four pack or something. I don't know. But when you go to Amazon now and you look at the smart plug, it's 25 bucks. So that changes my opinion of it entirely. This is a great thing. This is another stocking stuffer here. Does not need a hub. Stocking stuffer. Uh, man, well, the record for the shortest stocking stuffer of the year reign for the Amazon wall clock. The <laughs> champion. It's the Amazon plug. Our email address is feedback at daily tech. Wait, no, let's say, say thank. Let's say goodbye to Justin Robert Young first. Oh, sorry about that, Justin. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. You've been wonderful today. <laughs> um, I, uh, let folks know what you've been up to since uh, since Monday. Oh, you better believe it, uh, uh, man. All sorts of political news. Well, where are you going to get it? I mean, from a news uh, paper. Well, what are they? What is this? Uh, ancient times. Why don't you go ahead to my newsletter? It's free. You can go to the free political newsletter. Actually, not the, just freepoliticalnewsletter.com. You can sign up for it uh, every weekday. Five stories and a funny video. Man, the campaign videos have been coming hot and heavy. And there have been some doozies this week that people have gotten on freepoliticalnewsletter.com. Go check it out. Thanks to everybody who supports us on Patreon. Uh, we are very, very close, and we just need a handful more. If you are on the fence, be like Ryan the DJ, who became a patron of DTNS finally. Thank you, Ryan, for not only sending us great feedback on, on the, the battery, uh, the, the portable battery charger, but also becoming a patron of DTNS. Join Ryan right now. He put it off for a long time. You don't have to. You can make it right right now at patreon.com slash DTNS. Our email address is feedback at dailytechnewsshow.com. Love your feedback. Keep it coming. We're also live Monday through Friday. If you can join us, 4.30 p.m. Eastern, 2030 UTC. Put it on your calendar and find out more at dailytechnewsshow.com slash live. Back tomorrow with Shannon Morse and Len Peralta. Talk to you then. This show is part of the Frog Pants Network. Get more at frogpants.com. Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this program. <laughs> we did it. We made it. We did. Yay. It looks and like we made it. You've uh, crossed the Amazon and you've survived. <laughs> the, that was an Amazon of announcements. I'll tell you what. I think Amazon effectively realized this is why you do several announcements or release, you know, a, a press release with half these instead of doing all of them at the exact same time. Because if they're getting some of these details mixed up in like the day one press, then you've effectively not done your job for having a gigantic announcement, right? Say that again. Like 
the reason why you do a big announcement is so all the press can report in one single solitary voice. This is the product. This is when it's out. This is how much it costs. Right. Yeah. That's why you do these events. Otherwise, you could just list them on your website or send out a press release or or do something. But you want to make a, a little song, a little dance, a little salsa down your pants because you want to get the biggest bang for your buck in the press possible. But if people are all screwing up that your plug is one hundred and twenty five dollars instead of twenty five dollars, then maybe there could have been a little bit more care into making sure that there was a lot more sunshine on a few products instead of a billion products. Yeah. I kind of think that's true. I get it now. I'm going Ooh. back to the TechCrunch article now to see if that, that's been updated. Uh, yeah, it costs $25, which is pretty standard fare, is what it says now. <laughs> Other than earlier when it said it costs $125, which is quite expensive for a, a wall plug. Um, a list as wide and deep as the Amazon. Man, I mean, it's got the right idea. It's just a little wordy. Mm. Uh, the Oof. Amazon flows through it. also amassing Amazon announcements. There's also Amazon Echoes Everything but the Kitchen Sink. Is there an Echo in here? <laughs> that I like a lot. Oh, that's actually a good one. <laughs> yeah, picture of the clock. Is there an Echo in here? Is that what we're going with? Uh, is there an Echo in here? Is Sounds good. <laughs> Done. Is there an echo there? And I can't wait till Monday when I can get along with the stress of having moved and unpacking and setting things up instead of the stress of about to move. And packing. You know, but yeah, moving feels a little silly. It's like we're putting all these things boxes, you're just gonna take them out again. <laughs> Shouldn't we just be able to transport stuff? I'm wondering if maybe moving toward a minimalist lifestyle where you're just like, yeah, I'm just going to pack up my clothes and a couple of personal effects and everything else. Just Moving will here. do that to you. Every time I move, I'm like, you know what? I don't actually need anything in this box. Let's just put it in the dumpster. Save ourselves the trouble. I tried really hard to do that ahead of time this time. It's sort of like uh, when you're getting married and you're like at the very end, you're like, uh, OK, uh, I don't know, five hundred dollars. Like, just do it. I'm, I'm sick of this. I'm sick of the details. I want it to be as painless as possible. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Apologies to anybody who enjoyed the getting married process. I mean, there were fun times, but I definitely you know what I'm talking what about. You're talking though. about where yeah. you're like, yeah, fine, the, whatever. Just the do logistical. It. Yeah. You just, you know, you're right. Like that's the story. I just I just don't want to do this anymore. <laughs> there were the family members who decided to show up without RSVPing the day the day before, and we had to add a table. And uh, oh, that's our, that's nice. Our reception yeah. was not, not stressful. We uh we we had you know like my family was sitting at the St. Louis Cardinals table. Eileen's family was sitting at the Los Angeles Dodgers table, and so we gave them the Florida Marlins because they had the worst. We're in the league at the time. <laughs> oh, very passive aggressive of you. I like it. it. Was. I know. <laughs> <laughs> like that. Yeah, good stuff. Show up at the last minute. You get the Marlins table. It's an oily fish. It won't taste so good either. We did not serve them Marlin. No. I don't know if I've ever had Marlin. I'm sure I have, you but I can't Marlin? remember it being oily or not or what it tasted like. Or is it sailfish? Or is it sword? No, I think it's one of those fish. Swordfish is meaty. It's not very oily, I don't think. Oily fish are no. good for you, though. Yeah, swordfish is definitely meaty. Meaty. Yeah. That that's that I was going to say. I don't think it's a very oily fish. It's a very Oh, what about marlin. It's a hearty a hearty fish. It is? Okay. Mm -hmm. Marlin to hearty Marlin fish. steaks? Yeah. Fish with heart. It's a big <laughs> heart. heart. Got a lot of heart. Right out. Oh, to eat that heart. If he... mm. Well, it is, uh, it is uh, at the top of the food chain, so you can't eat too much. You'll get too much mercury. 
Oh, great. That's not funny. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, where's my star that, that will just over true. my head saying, now you know. The more, the more you know. know. The more you know. Oh, I'm going to Mr. Rogers it today and take off the jacket again. <sighs> so anyway, back to our mold conversation from before the show. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Molds. Yeah. How penicillin. That? Mold wine. Yeah. Right. yeah you, you, which, you know, for a while, I thought that that's what it, thought it was. was. <laughs> I thought it was moldy wine. Oh, gross. Well, so, during the holidays, where I'm like, kind of good, but like, this is so disgusting. Is this like fermented moldy wine? No, what? mold. It's mold. No, no, I, I know what mold wine is. I'm just saying. Oh, like, oh, yeah. I know. I don't. I well, don't it's know. like Bob Mold, the the uh, the guy from uh, Husker Du. I used to think his name was spelled M O L D. Like I can never find him in yeah, the. Yeah, the I see a little light. I oh, know you will. Uh, yeah, alcohol being essentially kind of a spoiled food, right? Yeah, uh, because it's it's been fermented. You could think like, oh, it's mold. It's like 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 cheese. Cheese is a, is kind of a mold thing. So, although cheese, cheese wine, <laughs> although spoiled wine gets turned into vinegar or it becomes vinegar. Right? True. Correct. That is a fact. The more you know. Do, do, do. <laughs> what are you reading, Justin? Oh, nothing. I'm just uh, making sure that everything is okay. Is everything okay? <laughs> Everything's okay. All right. Everything. All right. I've had uh, a little bit of a... I don't know if I'm getting sick, but like around halfway through my stream this morning, I my face exploded. Oh. Hello. Yeah. What does that mean? You look much better. I have considered uh, uh, yeah. a, a drainage out of my oh, face yeah. occurred. It was an everything out, everything must go situation in my nose. And so hmm. uh, I took a, a, a day quill and I think I'm good, but I'm a little head in the clouds. I hear you. You Did know, you I, used to, I used to take Drixoral. Do you guys remember Drixoral? Yes. Drixoral is. That was the commercial. That was the commercial. I don't remember like, the commercial. Drixoral is something that helps you. It was like it was almost like a Mad Lib. Yeah, you guys remember that? Drixoral. Drixoral. It would be like Drixoral is going to help you sleep. Drixoral is safe according to the FDA or whatever it was, you know, it was like, there were all these things Not where, going to kill you know, you. by the end of the commercial, you're like, Oh, it seems like it's all the right things. I'm going to find um, this on YouTube. I'm, I'm looking it up. Oh, look at this. Look at this. Hold on. Wait a minute. Let's see. What we Sorrel is active. It isn't. Rick Sorrel is Tylenol cold. Isn't. Rick's oh, and it's, it's putting up itself up against the cold. stuffiness. Plus the aches and pains of a cold for 12 full hours. Rick Sorrel. Isn't that better? I miss those commercials. I miss the Newprin ones. Small. Oh, uh, Newprin. Whatever happened yellow. to Newprin? Uh, I think they still sell it. They just they don't advertise it anymore. I brought up Drix Roll, though, because it used to just make me feel really good. It's probably you know, the like, ephedrine. It calmed me right down. Oh, yeah. Maybe not the ephedrine then. Yeah, well, you wouldn't think it was the <laughs> ephedrine that would do that. But I just, I was always like, oh, I feel much, I feel less anxious. I feel good. I feel mm. calm when mm. I have one Drix roll. It was more, it was kind of Should all be the taking more like, roll. I don't care about anything kind of head in the clouds, cold medicine feeling like I'm calm because I don't care. It's, it's, you know, when you're in chemistry class in high school, it's probably not the best state of mind. <laughs> yeah. I don't care. Let's blow up this beaker. Yeah. So blow up the beaker. Cool. Oh, is it burning my finger? I don't care. <laughs> Uh, whatever. I took some Drixoral. <laughs> Drixoral is, is going to help you get through chemistry. Uh, yeah. And I, it's off the market now because uh, of the ephedrine. They oh. just, they weren't one of the ones like Sudafed that went behind the counter. They just quit. They're just like, oh, yeah. wow. I mean, I'll tell you what, farm, uh, you know, uh, pharma specifically, Logical. stuff like uh, it's a high stakes game. Like there, there's, there's not a lot of room for, for error or problems with it. Uh, 
which kind of gets lost I mean, because they're they're easy to you know uh, uh make fun of or, or cast aspersions on but it's like that's uh, you know for for as many times as you hit with a big drug right there is a tremendous amount of cost that goes into researching getting something through trials uh mm -hmm. then you're also and even then then starting to get it into the doctor's offices where they will start where prescribing you give out, it where you yeah. give out free samples and little flyers and oh yeah coupon. And, and then you're still on the hook for a class action lawsuit that it's you know doing something that it shouldn't or or yada 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 Although actually that i actually way back in the day I, I i dated a pharmacologist and he he worked for you know for a big pharma company we'll just leave it at that and it was like you know we'd get 49ers tickets from you know people who were peddling their drugs and it's like all you have to do it's like going on a cruise all you have to do is like sit in this room for an hour before the game and listen to our new drug or yeah. that detail you know where even at this is a very long time ago but even at a young age i was like this seems borderline uh you know in my former existence uh, <laughs> when i was doing uh uh stuff at sales conferences for the go game you get some stories a few people get a few pops in them start talking about the medical rep field Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I have some stories, but uh, whew, no and, and, and there's a no lots of abor above board stuff going on, certainly. There's, but there's, definitely there were there were certain instances where I'm like, huh, this is okay. I see what's going on here. Uh yeah. Uh short skirts, big promises. Uh mm. you know, there's there's a lot of I heard a lot of stories, a lot of stories of, of it's a weird field because it's high stakes. It's either you make it's life and death stakes. Well, I mean, there's that the fact that these are literally drugs that are, are you know, in some cases, either making people's lives better, extending them or saving them. But also like. You know, there was a, a show on a, uh, a, a, a network that, you know, once used to pay all of us uh, that uh, did not have a ton of listeners, but it was for the right audience because all you needed was to convince one person that was listening to it to make a decision that would oftentimes lead to hundreds of thousands of dollars uh in referrals for or in gains for people who were advertising on it so it didn't matter if 13 people were listening to it it mattered that the right 13 people were listening to it because that mm -hmm. means that it's going to draw top dollar advertising and that's what a lot of this pharmacology field is is that you either got to get this stuff in the hands of doctors, so doctors are going to prescribe it, so doctors know about it, uh, or you ain't. And so all of that money spent on trials, all that money spent on uh, getting it through the FDA and approved, that is all for naught unless it is getting prescribed by doctors. Video folks, I want to apologize. We were going to leave you with a teaser of, of short skirts and big promises. Uh, accidentally <laughs> gave you the the substantial, uh, you know, uh, targeted audience uh, information, but we are going to leave it there and get into even uh, more uh, substantial uh, and 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 skirtless. Wait, no, that makes it sound interesting. Just we're we're going to end the video. Audio folks, stick around. There's more to come. Bye. <laughs>